Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Happy Friday out there. Today we are going to be working on Home Lab. We might merge in some stuff and then maybe look at some Terraform. I want to make it uh, one command so newbies and people who aren't as technical can just run one command, ideally, and it spins up a server form, it provisions it, does everything. They don't have to worry about really anything is the goal with this. So we're going to see how close we can get. Uh, let's start off with Kevin's merge request. I know he submitted something yesterday. The Ubuntu release settings, which is cool. You can pick your own, uh, pick your preferred flavor of Ubuntu now. It's handy. Alright. Well, let's see what he said here. Pull the other MR. Yep, yep, yep. Alright, so fixing the link there. <coughs> Adding a thing to VS Code to get ignore is fine. And so here is where we're changing a Bionic out for an Ubuntu release variable. So the problem last time was we didn't have a default value for this, so hopefully we got that nailed this time. Ubuntu release. I'm not sure if he saw that comment because it still looks like there's not anywhere where we're defining Ubuntu release by default. So I'll just poke him about this, and hopefully we can get that in next time. I had not. Oh, okay. So I don't need to tag you then, but uh, just these. We need um, we need this defined in group vars all with a default value, probably of bionic. Um, and then I was just curious why you did it. Not, I'll accept it. But. Cool. Yeah. Let me know when you're uh, good on that, and I'll pull it back in. Thanks for jumping on, Kevin. Always good to have you. Oop, my chat isn't quite displaying. One second. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. Um, so I made an issue last night for the... Uh oh, did this not get commented? Apparently that didn't get submitted before, so it might have been on my end, Kevin, not yours. Sorry about that. Um, so I wanted to look at Terraform, and the other thing I really wanted to get going was just an optional, let's put this in, uh, mail server, or configure postfix to u optionally use a third party um, SMTP server. Uh, this way, self-hosters can use Mailgun, for example, without needing to mess with ports, etc. to send mail. Because right now, that's the big piece that's missing from our mail server Docker stack is because it's hosted on site, we can't send out through port 25. Most residential ISPs don't don't allow you to send out through port 25, which is, I mean, it makes sense. It helps cut back on a lot of spam throughout the, throughout the years. Okay, so these are the two things I wanted to do today. Hook up the credentials for SMTP for Postfix to get that sending, because then I feel like that'll be ready for version 0 0.5 release. Right now we're not ready for 0 0.5 release, because mail server, there's no way to send mail, and that seems, you know, well, kind of important. Not for me, really. I kind of use it for web apps that, you know, send you links to confirm things and update things. So you pretty much never have to send emails to those people. You're just clicking links, consuming the email, and it works great for that right now. But I'd like to get this going first. Um, so I'm going to put this on the 0.5 milestone. And I might actually remove one of the other mail server milestone issues because if this is going, then um, oh, third party. Um, ooh, wrong button. Moving too quick, if the uh, SMTP outbound is going, then doing the port redirection that I was talking about doesn't really matter so much. Um, so that one's important, I feel like, but it'd also be nice to have Terraform spin things up for us. I guess, for me anyway, this is a more important one, so I'm going to go ahead and take a look at this one. Uh, we did get a comment 
on one of these other issues from, I don't remember who off the top of my head, but he had some information on how to set up configure postfix to use an external SMTP server. Um, so hopefully we can just grab that and modify it to, to our needs. Yeah, so Mike here, this is his Ansible snippet that he's using to send through SendGrid, same thing as Mailgun. He's installing Postfix directly, which <coughs> is not how we're doing it right now. We're using the Postfix that comes included in the mail server Docker image. And I'm not sure if this is included. It should be. Um, I guess I could always find out. Let's go ahead and take a look. <clears throat> Uh, let me resize this. Good. So if I go, actually, I don't know if I have. What? Oh. I'm going to go into the mail server image and just see if I can install this package again. And if I can't, yeah, already there. Perfect. So, I think these are the main sections we need. But we'll also have to... modify this to uh, work with the mail server docker image that we're using as opposed to postfix installed directly on the server. Added it to group bars all sweet. Let me take a look at that. Let's click this link. here. There you go. I'm about to release my audit. Perfect. <clears throat> Resolve that. And squash and merge. Thanks, Kevin. For yet another contribution. Yay! We'll give that a robot dance. Oh, there we go. Yeah, robot dance. Nice. Yeah, I'm all for that. I mean, I was just using Bionic because I knew it worked, but if we can support more, let's do it. Okay, so that's it for the MRs. We still got some issues. But let's go ahead and jump back on this postfix thing. So. I guess we'll do it in the mail server section, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're gonna want that template that he has. Um, this SAS wolf password. Ginger 2 template. As all things Docker are. Put this guy in here. All right, so notifications.smtp server dot username. I honestly didn't know you could use nested dot notations like this in Ansible, so I'm gonna have to look at that, and we could probably clean up some of our other variable names by using this. Yeah, dancing robot already. Before 8 a.m., we got dancing robots, man. It's a good Friday. How you doing this morning, T? 
congrats on the finding a place. That's a big, uh, big weight off your shoulders. Okay, so. I'm gonna copy all this and we'll, we'll just change it as I need to. <laughs> This track's been going a lot lately, but I'm not going to skip it in case anybody out there is jamming on it. Let me check on what's going on here. What we got? Oh, Shuffle's not on. That's why. It is a hug relief. Hugs are a relief, aren't they? Okay, so after we remove Postman, what is that? That's not for me, is it? You know, I saw I got an email from Attic Tech that Tipper put out a new album. I clicked the link and the link didn't work. So no, I didn't I didn't get to check it out yet. <laughs> I don't know what I, I, no, I thought it was a hug relief, man. What are you talking about? Okay, so before we start the mail server, in here let's put our new stuff. And this is gonna Okay, so configure postfix. So this is gonna be slightly different, but not too far off. Um, we're gonna want our path to be closer to our real world path. So var home lab OS, mail server, and then um, wait, what was it? Postfix dot main dot cf. So main dot cf. That should do that. And this same thing. Let's put this in our home lab OS mail server. And then this is going to be different. And this is going to be different because these are all going to be handled inside of the, po the mail server Docker container. And then this is that needed? We'll come back to that. I'm not sure. I'm going to comment that out. Yeah. We'll see if we can get it working with just this stuff. This doesn't need that. This I won't need because we're, we're going to be configuring it before we even start Postfix. So <clears throat> we shouldn't need to do that. This is the same thing. It looks like it's just telling it to do something, which we shouldn't need, and then we won't need this register value either. Viewers dropping like flies, dropping, dropping like flies. <laughs> but thanks for tuning in, everybody. I'm excited it's a Friday. Broken Soul Jamboree style. That sounds right up my alley, you know? Oh, dude, I just got my tickets for uh, <coughs> for Halloween. Wu-Tang at Red Rocks. Yeah, you know it. Wu-Tang Clan. Oh, it's going to be, I'm excited for that show. Okay, so we just have to map now these two files to inside of the Docker container in the appropriate places. So let's go take a look at the mail server uh, documentation, because it should tell us service edition requirements. Prioritizing the service edition requirements. What do you mean by service edition requirements? Uh, a requirement, I mean, we already have, um, you talking about like this list for new packages of new services? Um, 
Oh, new requests. Sorry, I, I, I misread that as requirements. Um, new service edition requests. I mean, if there's any you want to see moved up, but in general, I'm not too worried about any service requests. Um, mainly because I don't use the things people want to see. Uh, I mean, there's some old stuff like the Unify controller. I don't, you know, I don't even know how to set that up. Um, I've tried on this LDAP thing. I thought I closed this. Uh, no, I, I closed the home dash one. Kimchi, like web recorder I requested. Um, but I'm happy to prioritize whatever if there's something uh, important. But really, I, email sending is, for me, the biggest thing right now that's missing from home lab. Own photos I want to get in, but there's still no good Docker image for. Kimchi. What is that? I mean, I know the food. I got some kimchi fermenting over in the corner, but, uh... Oh, is it, is it wiki? What is kimchi? Anyway. Um... KVM. That'd be pretty cool. That would be pretty cool. Nice. How does that work though? Does it give you a KVM to your actual machine? If so, I assume you have to like give it a bun the Docker container a bunch of extra privileges, right? Or is it only KVM for the Docker containers? So, search for config. custom.conf <clears throat> so that's what that's the file that we want to override I think um, let me go take a look at that file I don't like this setup oh yeah mount docker why does it say that this is where it is when that's not where it is uh, let's take a look at the docker container then or the Compose file. So here, our volume mount goes to var slash mail. Postfix. Okay, so vim var mail postfix custom. Let's see if there's anything in there. Uh, I don't have vim. I don't have vi. Fine, cat. Uh, we got that relay host thing. I tried. This was an early attempt to, to try and get mail sending. But that ain't gonna work. So let's go ahead and update this to overwrite that. So config, we're gonna put this mail server exit inside a postfix and then over the cutter. Mail postfix. Okay, mail server, mail postfix. Mail postfix custom.conf. So this will pet set it all up with that. Now where did this go? Sassel password? Oh, Etsy postfix, right. Um, but that's gonna be not there. That's gonna be, uh, where was it? Var mail postfix. So I'll put it inside there. Var mail postfix Sassel password. And then this has to go into mail postfix folder. So that should do that. Start mail server. Send mail. 
All right, I think that's uh, everything we needed. I'm gonna, I guess, log in a mail gun and actually, let me take a look at my config real quick. I'm gonna have to go into private mode for a sec. I've already leaked plenty of passwords on this stream, <laughs> but I've rotated them all, so that's all right. Um, let's see here. Okay, yeah, I already got all my mail SMTP stuff in here, so, um, cool. I can come out of custom, or come out of private mode, so now I just need to... Uh, that should all be there. So I guess I'll just try and run a make on it and see how see what, how we do. Right. Um, I'm just gonna update one. It's because I don't want to run all that other crap and make it take forever. So we'll try to update one and uh, make sure it works. And then I'll try some mail sending and if that's all it takes, I will be ecstatic. Yeah, as far as package requests go, um, service edition requests, I'm just assuming that people are going to request more services than I'm ever going to be able to add. So, without help from people, uh, that's why I put those help wanted tags on it. That's kind of saying, I'm not going to do this, but feel free if you want to do it. So, I'm going to look at the config template. Um, so here's our SMTP values, SMTP host, port, user, and pass. So we're going to replace this SMTP host, SMTP port, and then in here we'll probably have to do, yep. And I'm going to make a note to myself to look into these doc notations. Uh, let me go ahead and do that. again how's that MOTD taking so long I wonder if there's a way to pass Still on the internet, right? <laughs> In this make file, it tries to do. This, the curl. So I just want to time out on the curl. Is there a. I want to say, like, don't try this for more than two seconds, you know? search for it I guess not that important right now could not find or access sasl password dot j2 but it's right there sasl oh password I really god that kind of shit pisses me off why would you delete the o and the r to save two characters and make things more confusing than just to type out password are you that lazy uh, programmers man Alright, 
let's go ahead and do that. Uh, curl. Timeout. This is probably going to be about people saying, oh, yeah. A curl opt timeout. Connect timeout max time. Alright, so yeah, we'll just pass it a dash M and a 3. It doesn't, it doesn't pull down in 3 seconds and just move on. Okay, so it's... Oh, no. Oh, what? Didn't I change that just now? Oh. Okay, alright, fine. So, actually, no. This is, I define this. So we're doing it my way. The way of spelling things out completely. Start the mail server to have it taken any new settings. And then we will just tail the log of the mail server and try and send an email and see what happens. I think it's just the actual, yeah. The actual mail server image. There's no separate postfix image. It's inside the mail server. Okay. So. should have yep no such file or directory sassel password dot db oh uh wait is it supposed to be called .db? That seems odd. I don't think that's what he did at all down here, but... Maybe it's because I'm using a different version of Postfix or something? We'll go ahead and just try it. What can it hurt, right? Name... Service error from Mailgun. Post not found. Um... My config might be wrong. One sec, let me check my config. Yeah, my host just says mailgun. Uh, I think it needs to be smtp.mailgun.com. I will check that in just a second here. Um, let's go ahead and restart this. Uh, and I'll log into the mailgun app. People blowing me up on IRC. Yeah. Getting some messages from a helpful IRC person. Thanks. Um, I think it is creating a hash file. That's what... Um, that's what this 
template is doing uh, SMTP pass. That's what that should be doing. Go ahead and restart it again. Okay. Okay. Well, it read the parameter correctly. All right, we'll try now go again. And let me log in here real quick and verify the Mailgun SMTP server address. Um, I'm going to try and send another email over here. Hmm, okay, so it doesn't want this .db on there, it's, it already adds that itself, so I just need to remove that from here, I think. Okay, that's interesting. Our Hector is saying, after creating Sassel password, run postmap Sassel password. So that's what this bit is doing down here. Um, right here, update postfix hash tables. So, since we're do, we might need to change our order of operations right here. I was hoping postfix would do that for us. Automatically on startup, but that's probably wishful thinking, isn't it? try this one more time and then uh, it probably won't work and I'll do what uh, our Hector was saying in my private messages to uh, and we'll try and put that file in and then we'll run that command in the docker container and that should do what we need to do uh, this probably almost certainly won't work but I'm just gonna give it one more try since I'm already here Appreciate the help, Hector. Uh, feel free to jump in the Twitch chat if you are so inclined. Okay, sending. Click. Yeah, same thing. Invalid argument. Okay, so we gotta do what he was saying. We gotta run that command. Well, yeah, you would. <laughs> you would have to sign up to Twitch. But it's cool, you can just keep sending me private messages, it's alright, but other viewers might be confused. Where are these messages coming from? <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go ahead and change this. And change this to be our mail postfix sassel password. I guess we'll put that back. Maybe we'll probably need both those actually now. Update. I mean, we might need these again too. We'll worry about that in a sec. So reload postfix. This won't work. I'm gonna have to. Neither of these are gonna work. I'm gonna have to pipe these into the Docker container. Um, rather than ma automating it right now, I'm, I'm gonna just try it by hand. I'm gonna comment these out. Actually, I shouldn't need to do anything right now. I can I can do this right now. So let me, let me try this. So we'll uh, exec into the mail server and try and run this. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna rename that file. That's a file or directory. What? The? Our mail. Let's shut 
done it, right? That's annoying. How's it? Uh, can I send it a some kind of command? Post fix. Yeah, try that. Post fix reload. All right, that should be good enough. So let's check the logs out again, and then try and send one more email. Yeah, I never verified the actual address. Um, I might need to go into private mode for a second here so I don't leak anything. Faster with their API, mailgun.org. That'll probably be it. Um, I think that's all I need to change. So, oh, uh, one more sec. One second longer. I think this actually should do it. I'm, I'm kind of confident, I'm partially confident that this will do it. I just have to run this and this. Man, I don't want to listen to that right now. second last time to output that final message. Oh. Oh. Okay, I need to uh, run those commands. Okay. This time for real. Uh, Alfred right now, but I'm looking for a Why is it still trying to do dot com? I changed it to dot org, didn't I? Let me check that. Um, yeah, I'm using Alfred, which is this launcher. Um, 
but I don't like that it's closed source and you have to pay for it and my license is expired, so... I was looking for some other ones. I found one alternative that looked like it might be okay, but it seemed very not not ready for prime time yet. So I'm open to alternatives. Um, let me go ahead and just check this in a sec. Timeout. Oh, oh, oh. Wait, no, that's port 857. Why is that? That should work, right? Connect to SMTP mailgun.org 857. Unless. Unless somehow my local. Yeah, unless my ISP is blocking 857 as well as 25, which would be super annoying. You know what would be super cool, though, is Mailgun has a, uh, er, yeah, Mailgun has this API, right? So, it'd be awesome if there was a SMTP server that accepted, like a Docker container, that accepted SMTP messages, wrapped them in Mailgun's API, and then sent them out through that. Either that, or the solution I've been trying to get to the whole time, uh, the IP tables redirect. Like, why can't I just force this outgoing traffic on port 25 or 587 out through the Bastion server? I feel like that should be doable, but I don't know enough about IP tables to make it happen. 857 or 587? I mean, I don't think I set that port. Um, 857. And I don't think I overwrote the port. Talk about port here? No, no, no. Uh, let me check if I did override that port and maybe I set it to the wrong thing. Eight five seven. It's supposed to be eight five seven, right? Yo yo, sub third wave. Try telnetting. I guess that's a good idea. Telnetting the mailgun. Dot org. Yeah, so was it trying 857? Yeah, so why? Let me check. Thanks for, uh, see this is why, you know, the stream is awesome. Multiple eyes on this, saving me a bunch of time. <coughs> um, 587, one sec. Yeah, 587. 587. Jeez. Jeez Louise. Okay, so... One more time. Second verse, same as the first. A little bit louder, a little bit worse.
Well, the uh, guys in the Docker IRC channel are all all good with me dropping in stream announcements. So I think I might uh, might start doing that. Okay, so there we go. Started. Um, I'm gonna restart it. If this works, I will be pretty happy. I'm gonna get dancing robots for sure. Um, log, or no. Zack. And then run this little guy. And exit, and then log. Clear that out. And now send an email. Okay, well that time it's still trying to send my old, um, those old emails, it's trying retries, which is good. And it's saying my uh, authentication failed. Mailgun is not loving your login or password. Okay, so I'm going to just check my API keys, this will just take a second. But hey, 587, we got the port, so hold on. Uh, that right there, we'll do a little, we'll do a little dance for that guy. <laughs> Thanks for, uh... Noticing that, Kevin and Hector. I'm gonna go back in here real quick and just check my keys and mail gun. Master at your domain name. Okay, so that's gonna be that, and then for uh, each domain and domains tab. Just getting credentials here. Sorry, almost done. And we'll be back in. Password. Let's try this. Okay, uh, that we're back. Let's take a look at the logs again. Here's the logs. I think it already failed all the, the things it was trying to send, so we'll send one more. At least one more. Oh, um, right. I'm going to change the config file, but then I need to do my little song and dance to get it to update. Two dancing robots, yeah. I might need some other victory buttons. <laughs> what does this one do? Success! Status sent. There's a beer. That's worth a beer. What do you say? I say it's worth a beer. A little early in the morning for a beer, but it's Friday. You know, do what you gotta do. Uh, let me... Oh, well, there's the API key. Oh, I'm releasing it. Uh, let me go ahead and rotate that API key real quick since uh, I just burned myself on that.
so easy to burn yourself here. And I don't need y'all sending emails into my mail gun account, so sorry. I'm going to take a second to, to rotate this password. This will be released uh, today, Kevin. Hopefully, right on the stream. All right, I'm gonna try to set up one more time. Get out of these password showing pages, and we'll go back here. Hold on. Okay, so there we go. Um, but we're not quite done. We're not quite done. We're getting we're getting there. But these commands that I have to run manually, we need to run those not manually right so we're gonna start it is there there is a pause right there's a pause in Ansible pause feature rest sleep maybe uh, I just wanted to wait like 10 seconds before it runs those commands inside of postfix because I don't think it'll be ready before 10 seconds so uh, it should just be pause in time oh five minutes uh, let's go with seconds, but we'll... Oop. Seconds, we'll do ten. There we go. And then we're gonna do... I mean, there might be a way to do this. Let's see if there's an Ansible way to do it. If there's a way to run docker exec, otherwise we're gonna have to... Docker container, can I run an exec with that? Capabilities, comparison, debug, device. No, exec. No. Let's look at just a few of the examples, I guess, and see if there's anything. a container with a command, how do I run a container on an existing command? Whatever, I'm just going to use exec. Um, so, it's exec, right? There's that deprecated. No, they want, like, shell or something. Oh, God. Just give me exec. Uh, where's the module index? Command. Execute commands. There's also raw or shell. What's the difference between command and shell? It runs commands through a shell on the remote node. Alright, we probably want that one. Um, so we'll just go ahead and grab. Yeah. So, um, name, update, post fix. Uh, password hashes. And then shell, we're going to do a docker, exec. I don't think I have to assign IT, so we'll just do mail server, mail server one, and then throw these commands in. And that should do it. Doesn't need, well, yeah. Postfix might, might not to be need to be running to run postmap, but the container needs to be running. So this is just giving time for everything to come up. I probably don't need this. Uh, I mean, I guess we'll try it without it first. So now that should be automated and do everything we need to get postfix up and running and sending mail out through Mailgun. And Mailgun, uh, if you don't know, I mean. Ideally, I want to be using the Bastion server to route the traffic, right? I don't want to be going through a third party if we can avoid it. But as far as third parties go, I think Mailgun's a pretty good one. And you get, what, like 10,000 free messages a month? So you you really got to work hard to hit that cap. But 
I will call this good enough for 0 0.5. How do we configure all the various services to use this? So, uh, you shouldn't have to actually. Any, uh, if you look, oh, what happened here? Postfix not found. Oh, is that because it's probably wants these to be separate? Um, let me just try this. Um, so by default, Kevin, everything in the config, so let's look at the config here. So we have these SMTP hosts, port, user, and pass. So um, any service that supports SMTP can just link those up. Um, I don't know how many are using it. Grafana is using it right now. And that's it. <laughs> yeah, so Grafana is using it right now. I'm pretty sure other things like Home Lab or Home Assistant uh, support it. And I'm trying to think of some of the other ones that might support it. Anything that does alerting should support it. But yeah, you should be able to just use these directly. What? What's wrong? Did not find expected key. Ugh. What am I doing here? Jesus. Jesus. So I didn't actually even check my mail yet to see if that email came in. Probably got spammed. <laughs> I mean, it came from Mailgun, so it shouldn't get spammed. Oh, look at my spam folder. One million dollar donation to me. Wow, what are the chances? Um, it's probably related to Mailgun, but Mailgun said it got it and it was happy about it, so I'll just check my Mailgun stats. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, this Nigerian king, he just wants to give me all this stuff. Um, okay, so last check. I should now be able to just... Okay, cool, yeah, re for right here's our reload that we just did. So I'm going to try to send one more little email here. Or I guess not from that. This one sucks. Great success! Haha! -ha. Alright, so, um. Yeah, yeah. Gotta keep that in mind. Have them verify first. <laughs> Alright, um. I think that's it. I think we're done. Uh, let me check. I mean, it, it got accepted by Mailgun. You know, that's all we can say. If there's something from Mailgun to my mailbox that's not that's breaking down, that's fine. But Mail Server did its job of successfully delivering a mail to an external SMTP server. So we're gonna call that good. We're gonna put a feather in that hat, and we're gonna go ahead and uh, just get this committed. This is actually going to not be, I'm going to have to add more configuration to this later once we get outgoing mail working without Mailgun, but that's all right. For now, this is fine. Using SMTP for outgoing mail from mail server. All right. Well, that was half of what I wanted to get done today.
Oh yeah, I accepted Kevin's merge request, so I'm gonna have a merge, get rebase, origin master. Oh, uh, get stash, get rebase, origin master, get status, one commit, good, get push. Um, if you're wondering about these GSs, GPs, GCAs, those are just custom aliases I have for things like get status, get push, or, and uh, get commit dash A. Those are the various little aliases I have set up. Hector saying I don't need to reload postfix if I've only changed a hash file. Uh, that's fine. I mean, maybe we can delete that line if we decide we don't need it. But I've done enough testing around sending emails for right now, I'm just going to leave it there. Happy to remove it, but I don't think it really hurts much being there either. Okay, so we got outgoing mail working. That's Okay, so that's that issue. Closed. Nice. Um, right, this is the next thing I start, wanted to look at. Terraform. How much time do we got? 15 minutes? It's enough time for me to at least get going with Terraform. Maybe give a quick intro. Um, I don't know how many people have used it or not, but it is pretty dope. Uh, Terraform's a HashiCorp product and it lets you spin up cloud services based on a YAML definition so I can define a YAML file for everybody um, we'll have a few different levels I think by default we're gonna spin up well the most not by default by default we're not gonna do anything but the most common setup I think for people will be a bastion host and an s3 bucket pretty simple um, but right now, those are the two things I need to spin up manually by hand in a remote cloud services to be able to use HomeLab how I want to use it. Uh, the alternative to that really is going to be, instead of a Bastion server on uh, on the cloud, just the whole server up there, right? A lot of people might not have home servers that they can run all this on, but they want to self-host in that their data is on a server that they control, etc. So... Instead of using a batch bastion to get to your home server, you use a cloud server to replace your home server. That'd be the other, the other option. And then I want both of those two things. So I guess I should start putting in this in the issue. Um, yeah, cloud server, Tink or cloud server, which is what I just said, as well as S3 storage buckets. But I want it to work for, um, should work, ideally, for either DigitalOcean or Amazon. Because DigitalOcean supports um, S3. I'm pretty sure they have their own S3 buckets going on. WireGuard. Oh, yeah, WireGuard. <coughs> I haven't used done any WireGuard, so honestly, that might be a lot, a lot of watching me flounder around. But uh, if that's what we want to do, we can do that too. But I feel like WireGuard is just replacing Tink, which is already working pretty well. And I haven't noticed any slowness. If it's faster, that's... <laughs> Let's flounder. Uh, if it's faster, that's great. But Terraform, this is the most useful, I think, for general users. I want to get this almost to the point that, you know, my mom could spin up her own home love OS stack. And maybe that's a little ambitious, but uh, programmer, programmer. I don't know what that is. Oh, nice. Um. I'm not sure. Terraform supports. I know they do DO and a AWS, but I'm not sure what else. They probably have a list here of uh, integrations. Or maybe it's in the modules. Yeah, AWS. Yeah, it's kind of like what Rancher does. And I've thought about including Rancher uh, in this. I've never used Programmer, actually, but this looks pretty dope. <laughs> I like that. We don't assume you are stupid. They probably should, though. <laughs> they probably should assume that everyone is stupid.
Well, I mean, if they're built for programmers, then they should support Terraform for sure. So, I guess this is a. Okay. okay, let's just go ahead and define um, a Bastion host. We'll start there. Uh, we'll just go through their intro because I think they have some examples. Getting started. Yeah, it's already installed. I hate. Why do people insist on using videos for everything? Okay, here we go. So, this will be the Bastion. We'll do the Bastion host first. So, Bastion.terraform. This can probably be a micro. I'm not sure what that is. It's probably the latest above two. We'll, we'll find what AMI we want. Um, maybe we'll just call it Bash. Home Cloud. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm also, people have had complaints about the name Home Lab OS. It doesn't, I mean, it's not really an operating system. It doesn't really make sense. Um, but I consider it an OS as far as this is the operating system for your home. Uh, but if anybody has any better name ideas, I am all ears, for sure. So I'm thinking we handle this the same way that we handle the configuration. So Home Lab OS config, this is a... Um, this is a role that is run against your local computer. So it sets up, you know, these config and YAML, config YAML and inventory files. Um, so I'm wondering if it makes sense to just go ahead and do a uh, bashin.tf.j2. We'll do our bashin file here, and then that'll allow us to do this, you know, like AWS access, and then I guess we're using lower cases, uh, and then region. You know, that would let you do that. I think there's a way that you can use multiple Terraform files mixed together. I would like to have this be a separate file so we can just define the resources we need in each, in each um, template. So let's look at the config task. It'll have, yeah, we're just copying these. This will probably fail because I don't have any of those variables defined, so I'll just have to go to find those in our group bars folder or file. Group bars all. Yep, right there. So backup stuff, S3, tank stuff. Uh, let's say Terraform stuff. AWS secret. AWS um, access and then AWS region. So that should be blank variables now, so this should at least give me a blank bastion TF file. Well, not blank, but there we go. With blank region. Access. So we can set a uh, default region at least, uh, US East 1, and then obviously people will need to fill in their own secrets. Uh, we'll also end up doing something similar with DigitalOcean. 
so now once I fill in those values, I'll get this, and then I should be able to run, I think just terraform apply, usually. Commit. And then apply. Um, does it just take any .tf file and pull it in? Because they type in apply, but they just have the file called example.tf. I'm wondering if it just searches for all .tf files and uses those. Terraform on this computer? Alright. I wonder if we can... I mean, this will all be separate, right? It won't be a requirement. But maybe we'll have a make... A section of the make file for terraforming. Like, make... Make terraform. Probably don't need to do that. We can just tell people to do terraform apply. What I'm trying to figure out, though, is the easiest way. Can we automate installing terraform for people, or do we need to have them install it? We probably need to have them install it, because... They might be deploying from any number of operating systems. Alright, but we got a start of our Terraform, uh, Terraform commands, which will be dope. I'm looking for, like I said, a one command private cloud full setup. That's what we're, that's the goal of this. So, if you're down with that goal, or you just like open source stuff, or, you know, you just like hanging out and chatting, that's cool too. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I'll be back Monday, same time, same channel. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, right here. Um, sometimes Tuesdays and Thursdays, sometimes on the weekends, sometimes I miss those days. You just got to follow me on Twitch and turn those notifications on to uh, stay up to date. <laughs> uh, thanks, Code Fryer. Thanks, Hector. Thanks, T. Thanks, Third Wave. Everybody tuning in, getting in the chat. Everybody who didn't get in the chat, all the lurkers. Enjoy your weekend. I got to get to work, but uh, we'll see you Monday. Thanks again.